All right, I just want to take a quick look at a couple of techniques for handling approval comments. Uh, now, one of these is a mechanism or a method that I came up with on my own a while back, um, well, a long time ago when I started using approvals, probably two years ago now. Uh, the other, more than two years ago, uh, the other is courtesy of John Liu, who was a well-known Flow MVP or Power Automate MVP. Um, so I think, I mean, my, the method I've been using is certainly functional. It's worked for me for a long time. Um, there's nothing wrong with it, but that being said, his method is definitely a little more sophisticated and ends up looking a little bit better in the end, giving you some additional options. So without any further ado, let's take a quick look. So just explain why this is necessary. Uh, when you're working with approvals in Power Automate, they, they updated the approvals connector um, in April, around April of 2018. And one of the byproducts or one of the, the changes that that update included was the fact that all approval responses are contained, or I should say the comments from the responses are contained in an array. So to take a to show you what I mean by that, I'm have a, a flow run history here, and I have the wait for an approval step, which is where the responses are collected. And here we can see we have a responses array, and we know it's an array based on that square bracket. Uh, so within that responses array, we have the responder, uh, which is going to be their display name, their tenant ID, all that uh, user principal name. We have the request date, the response date, the response, and their comments. Uh, and then if we scroll down a little bit farther, we'll see that there's the end of that responses array. And below that, we do have a response summary, which is you know, handy to have because it kind of gives us, in a nutshell, the, the name, the email, um, as well as the date of the response, uh, sorry, the request date and the response date. So that's a good value to have. The problem is that it's, uh, it's all those values stuck together and they're in UTC, which is less useful than them being in your local time. Uh, and also it doesn't include the comments. And very often comments are important to include in those follow-up emails. So if, if you have an approval, uh, and that approval is re is approved or rejected, you want those comments that the approver left in their response to be visible to the requester. And in this scenario, we have that response summary, the completion date, the outcome, uh, the name of the approval, the title, the details, um, but none of that is, none of that includes the, uh, comments from the approver themselves. Uh, so that becomes a problem. Uh, now, the way we used to do this in the in the old version was that the comments was a singular value, it was a string value, so you could easily drop that into an email. But since it's no longer a string value, it's an array we have to handle a little bit differently. So the way that I have traditionally handled this um, or addressed it is using a string variable and then appending to it. So essentially I set up a, I initialize a, ver a string variable, in this case I called it var response summary, set as a type string, and then essentially I use an append to string variable action to add to that variable uh, the responder name, the response, the timestamp, and the nice thing is that in here, because I'm including it as a value in, as I'm building this variable, I can use a an expression to convert that to local time and format it how I want to format it, and then I can include the comments. So I'm essentially rebuilding that response summary field using the values that I want in the format that I want. And this works fine. Now, if you have a single approver, obviously this applied to each loop will only run once. But if you have five, essentially it's going to 
you know run five times and each time it's going to append a line so that the include the the text that you're including at the end uh, whether it's just the responses or just the comments whatever it is um, is essentially going to be all of them together all of the responders or all of the approvers uh, comments together so in that scenario you definitely want to be sure to include the responder name so that they can match the name of the responder to the comments that were left by that responder uh, so this way as I said works fine I've not had a problem with it that being said a few weeks ago uh, I saw a video from uh, John Levesque and John Liu where he showed how to do the same thing using a couple of data operations specifically select and create HTML table so select if you're familiar with SQL a SQL select statement essentially allows you to select some subset of data based on a set of conditions select in Power Automate is similar um, but essentially what you can do is feed it the value that you want to or the array that you want to extract data from and tell it what comments or what columns rather you want to get from that so in my case I selected I had a column for uh, responder response response timestamp and then comments um, and essentially what that does is it takes the existing array puts it into a new array which is now the output of that select but it's it's sort of filtering down to just the columns you want and then you can or selecting I should say the columns that you want from that array and then we can use a create HTML table to or this could be CSV if you prefer CSV versus HTML it's kind of your choice but basically what we can do is convert that array into an HTML table so that we can then plop that HTML table into our email at the end and again this is going to give us the same data formatted a little bit differently uh, and again the formatting is really going to depend on which email action you choose to use whether it supports HTML etc etc um, so basically just to show you kind of how these two are built I'm just going to go to the edit view for this flow and again this is just our uh, this is the variable where I'm declaring or initializing the var response summary variable and then apply to each I am appending to that with the responses approver the responses response the timestamp although in this case I'm adding in that convert from UTC to convert it from UTC time into our standard uh, I'm sorry our local time zone uh, in the lowercase f format which I found to be pretty friendly for most folks uh, and then I'm adding the comments and I'm just separating those with a pipe character and then at the end of that you would probably want to have a carriage return or a blank line new line whatever you want to call it so that if you did have more than one approver you're going to end up with one row of text per approver uh, possibly more if they left a lot of comments or if their message window is small then it's going to wrap the text obviously uh, but the bottom line is you would want to have you know start each subsequent append on a new line so you want to make sure you include that blank line at the end of your append uh, to string variable value field now looking at the other way the the, the other method which John Liu introduced me to uh, or demonstrated um, this is essentially where we're using the select action and pointing it at the responses body so essentially that's the responses body is the array of responses data from that wait for an approval and we're really just saying okay from that collection of data from that responses array bring back the responder and in this case I'm getting their display name their response so whether did they approve did they reject whatever if you're using custom values whatever their custom response was 
um, or whatever their response was. The timestamp, actually, let me just take out that response timestamp because we're getting a little redundant there. Uh, and again, in this case, I was able to incorporate that convert from UTC expression um, to format it the way I want and convert it into our local uh, Eastern Standard Time. And then our comments. And then below that, in this create HTML table action, we're simply taking the output of that select to create an HTML table. So these are the two different ways. And then essentially, once you have those, uh, either you have your variable built or you've used the select an HTML table, uh, essentially in your response actions to the requester, you would either include the variable, uh, the response summary variable, or the that HTML table output as appropriate based on whatever your requirements are. So those are the two different ways of handling the, specifically handling the approval comments or approval responses or the approval response data in Power Automate. Uh, there are probably some other options out there that I haven't explored, um, but th these are, as I said, the way that I've been using it for a long time that's worked really well and the way that I'm probably going to start doing them going forward because I think it is a little bit cleaner. I try to, uh, as much as possible, I try to avoid using loops uh, in, especially those apply to each loops, if I can avoid them just because they sometimes can be difficult to troubleshoot. You can, if something fails inside of that loop, you can't always see exactly what failed. So it's just a personal observation that I've made. So I'm trying to, as much as possible, avoid using those loops going forward. Uh, but those are the two different ways to deal with it. Um, if you have another, feel free to leave a message in the comments and let me know what you think.